Welcome to the new Haitian generation. I am Tonise Exantis, producer for Lunarversal Production and founder of Silent Christ Inc. nonprofit organization for domestic violence and your host for today. We are here today at the fire side chat about our feature film called The Queen's King. But before we do that, let's meet our panel. So we have Lunar Eugene, director of Lunarversal Production. Say hey, Lunar. Hey, everybody. What's good? <laughs> and then we have our beautiful Giovanni and Andre, supporting role actress who play Dahlia. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Hello, guys. Hello. Yes. And last but not least, we have Mecca Grimo Marcelin, lead actor who plays Ram and is also a cultural ambassador and champion for youth programs. Ça <laughs> passe. <laughs> So we also have a beautiful trailer of the Queen's King. Let's take a look at the trailer. Hey, Queen. Only a king can recognize a queen. But only a queen can steal a king's heart. Is that so? From the director of Loving Till It Hurts and Bay Night. That was the moment a spirit tied a knot. But I got big dreams of being a rap star. Follow your dream. It's the one thing I'm passionate about. A film for the culture. Every king needs a queen. I'm hearing Queen's King everywhere. Oh, y'all superstars now, honey. Congratulations on that Queen's King song. It's a song you don't normally hear too often in the rap game. Uplifting black women, definitely don't. Look, the entire music industry is about to change, and you want to be at the front of the innovation. This might be the answer to more ownership, which we've been talking about. And you can be the next big rap artist from Broward on our label. Cleaned up pretty well. Lafimen is here. He wants to see you. you. Got the money with him? No. That's the problem. It's more than a movie, it's a movement. We are each other's strength. A symbolism of hope for the unity for the black culture. I thought you were done. For sure, I am done, Queen. It's just you. I'm talking about your street life. How do I know that he didn't steal the money? It's just like I'm loyal to you, he's loyal to me. We need to go shake the streets and find out where the money at. And we only got 24 hours to do it. Ram, I need you. I can't be making all these moves out here and you have step and everything. How was the session? Stepped up, had to take care of something. Like what? She made me want to do better. Hey, that's what a queen do. Every black man in the world deserve a good woman. Every king needs a queen to get him off these streets. You did that. We? You can never build a kingdom together if you still crave attention from the streets. I struggle with life, better decisions and making it right. Caught up in the hype, married the money and made her my wife. Divorce of the night, stressing me out, risking my life. In love with the bag, trapped in a trap, pulling a heist. These streets aren't safe for a black man. So don't walk through them like you're invisible. Ain't no love for a young black king. Out in these wow. You know, as a producer for Lunarversal Production and being so happy to be part of this project, how does this movie impact the Haitian community? And I take that to you, Lunar. Um, in so many ways, um, when you think about being Haitian and being able to see yourself on the screen, because every character that you're going to see in the film, you know, uh, the characters are the lead actors, they Haitian-American. So I always wanted to do a film where, you know, it sort of portrays the Haitian-Americans that are living here in, in South Florida. And so being the fact that you're Haitian and you're going to see, hear a little bit of Creole and get into the family members, and, and, and it's exciting. You're really going to actually see yourself, you know. So it, it's something to look for, forward to and something to be proud of, and especially the quality of the film, you know, that's, that's important. 
Wow, awesome. Mm -hmm. And I guess um, my other question I will have, and I will actually direct this to Mecca, you know, how do you feel is the Haitian culture being represented in this film? Yeah, I think it's definitely a realistic um, outlook. You know, you have, um, you know, mothers, grandmothers, children, the way that we, our relationships with each other, I think are very, very real. The fact that the director is Haitian himself, we're not skipping sure. over any, um, you know, sometimes when you're not from the culture, you right. may skip certain um, things that are very important to the culture. Mm -hmm. And so I think that because the director is Haitian, because a lot of the staff that was working on this, I mean, we're talking about a Haitian American mm -hmm. artist, you know, um, that's trying to assimilate in society and so i think that it was very well represented all the behaviors you know everything that went with the culture i think was on point yeah i would awesome. say awesome awesome and so let's get into this whole fire start you know um fireside um chat and i just want to get a little bit more background for each and every one of you guys so Tell us a little bit more about your background, your upbringing. So, and I'll start that off with you, Gio. So tell <laughs> us about your background. Um, so I'm very much Haitian American. So that's the, one of the main reasons why I appreciate being a part of this film. I grew up very Haitian. I have L'école l'église Lacai. Those were the only three that we, <laughs> we had to abide by. Yes. So I grew up in the church. Um, so I kind of relate to Nephi. You know, you're, you're, you grew up in the church. You're supposed to be doing these things. You decide to do something else. And your parents are looking at you like, this is not what I wanted for you. This is not the path. Yeah. So I definitely grew up very Haitian. I mean, I used to have to read legal documents for my parents. <laughs> so yes. okay. so as, as it got as a Haitian... Haitian AF on my on yes. my in my household. So and, and let's say the three L's again. Period. Yes, yes. And and that's definitely and for you know, just for the audience to know that Nephi, she is the lead role actor in Queen's King. Yeah. And definitely for sure, when you're watching this, they will be able to um relate, relate to this. Sure. Yes, mm -hmm. definitely yeah, for sure. sure. So, you know, I want to actually take this next question and direct yeah. it to our Lunar Eugenia director. Mm -hmm. And, you know, who inspired you to become the person you are today? Mm. Yeah, that's, that's very deep. Um, well, I, I grew up listening to a lot of different more, more motivational spe speakers. And one of them is, I would say, it's Les Brown. And not only I've listened to him, but I got a chance to work with Les Brown. You know, as a graphic artist, I've done a lot of um, some of his books and everything. So being close to him and, and, and knowing that he's from actually Liberty City, where you are from. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so to hear his story and how his ultimate goal was to help his mother to stop cleaning to yeah. toilets and, and, and just... That was his ultimate goal to help his mother. His mother to hear his story was just okay. really uplifting. And there's one quote that he always say: um, "Jump off the cliff and grow your wings as you go down." And I've always remembered that clip. And this is what I've used to build my film career from Love Until It Hurts, Bay Night, and now Queen's King. Um, so. That's one individual I would say I've listened to the most, but a lot of different, yeah. you know, other sp speakers as well. Nice. Yeah. And I guess, you know, and I'm going to just, you know, carry this conversation along and, and just ask, you know, what are some of the milestones and barriers and breakdown memories that you have that literally prompt you to your inspiration as well? Um, when you talk about me memories, are you referring in terms of, what type of memories like like any type memory. of your childhood memories it could be your adult memories anything that gave you inspiration of who you are today um i have to say just really being haitian yeah coming from haiti coming into a whole different country and seeing how people have different perspective on haitians or what haitian looks like or what Haitians are supposed to. I think because of that, it gave me a sense of purpose where I feel like whatever that I'm going to do, it has to be above and beyond 100% because I want people to see, yo, we have very talented Haitians. It's not just yeah. what you see on television, yeah. what they show. Right. Yeah. And you look at here, you, you have a very diverse Haitian here. You see different people that's mm -hmm. within the same culture. Right. Yeah. So 
I think being able to bring our unique gift to the table, um, to be Haitian, to come from Haiti, to come here, should re inspire anybody to become great. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, to know where we come from. Yeah. And to know that we are in a, a in a con con country. There's so much opportunities. So I feel I feel like that as Haitians, we need to take um, the advantage of that. Yeah. And create some some something big. So my inspiration comes from a lot of what I'm seeing that's happening in Haiti right yeah. now. Yeah. And I guess we all can relate to yeah. that, you know, yeah. as you sa said earlier, you yeah. know, me growing up in Liberty City, the only Haitian girl in yeah. Americanized, you know, community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some of the struggles that we have to go through with, you know, our yeah. parents, cultural right. backgrounds, you know, limited of education. Mm -hmm. It's just so many things that we try to, you know, juggle. Yeah. And especially some of the things that we're per portraying in yeah. this film, as far as you migrating over to America and mm -hmm. trying to, you know, move into your dreams. So. I literally want to direct this um, similar question for you as well, you know, Mecca being a hip-hop rap artist and a culture ambassador and, and so forth. Like, what are some of the barriers you also, you know, memories that you would like to share that also inspires you of who you are today? I think um, I would say that living in New York and being Haitian wasn't something that was always acceptable also. You know, and so when you talk about memories and you talk about inspiration, I remember seeing, um, you know, we went through that, that time period where it wasn't cool to be Haitian. Yeah. And, you know, we were at the, you know, we were just being teased and at the bottom of the totem pole yeah. as far as be, being critiqued and coming from another country, just like how you're saying, and hardworking people trying to assimilate here yeah. in this society in America trying to make it. Um, I want to salute my parents. You yeah, know, sure. at this time, there's a lot of people that inspired me. Yes. But at this time in my life where I am right now, I want to give it up to dad. I want to give it up to mom yeah. for really guiding us. And when we were going to go astray, and you'll see some of this movie, you have somebody that, you know, really has, really has somebody that wants to give him some direction, but he still goes astray. Yeah. And that mm -hmm. happens within the family, too. Our parents did everything that they could to keep mm -hmm. us off the streets. And yeah. my brother and I, that's where we wanted to be. We yeah. didn't want to be in a warm house. We didn't want to be where the food was at. Yeah. Of course, <laughs> of course, we came, yeah. we came back for the food yes. and the love. But right. as soon as we ate, we were right back out. Yes. You know. Yeah. And so, um, it's you know, it's for them to be able to just raise yes. you know two young two young men, young boys in society. It's challenging. I, I think yeah. it's, it's very yeah. challenging. And so I salute. Haitian parents coming from another sure. country, not knowing the language, For still sure. buckling down, not being distracted, and still taking care of business, raising yeah. two young boys. Yeah. And, um, you know, we're where we are right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And again, their motto as our parents, l'école, l'église, la carré. <laughs> yes. So let's get into the Queen's King movement. And, you know, just tell me a little bit more about the Queen's King movement. So, and I'll direct that to you, Luna. Yeah. Um, when you Think about the film itself, Queen's King. Um, this is a film that is geared towards, I would say, uh, men, uh, because we need to take our rightful place first. That's why it says Queen's King. I am a Queen's King. Um, and so when we understand the battle that's between men and women these days when it comes to relationship, the values that we used to hold, we feel like everything is sort of drifting away. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a separation between men and women, especially black men and, 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 and women. So with that being, being said, I wanted to start a movement, and this is what the logo represents. It's a symbolism of hope for unity within the black culture. So it's a movement that stands against mm -hmm. violence, gun violence and a disunity that continue to plague our communities. So by doing that, we want this to speak volume, not just the film itself, but when you able to wear one of these, I want you to look at that and symbolize and say, yo, that stands for unity. I w it's a reminder for each and every one, one of us, for every black ind individual, every Haitian, especially what's going on right now in a culture yeah. in, 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 in Haiti. So we need some sort of movement. I'm not saying that this film is the cure, yeah. but it is a start of conversation yeah. that where that can lead us back to the film and see the struggles that one artist is having trying to follow his dream, because we all have goals and, and, and aspirations, yes. but how do you do that 
when you are falling victim to the street life. So it's a struggle. Mm -hmm. So this is a representation of us coming together, uniting as one. Union fell off us, yeah. as yes. they say. Nice, yeah. nice, beautiful. So we have a clip of Can't Sleep at Night. Let's take a look at that now. I'm tired. I can't sleep at night. When I wake up, I think you're there and you're not. It scares me. Can we just live a peaceful and happy life? I need some time off. Away from here, away from this gangster life. Oh, hold on, nephew. You're over-exaggerating. You knew who I was and what I was into when we met. I'm changing, though. You know, sometimes it's easier to get into the rabbit hole, but finding your way out can be more complex. I did step out the studio, but I didn't kill anybody, if that's what you're thinking. I don't know what to believe anymore, Ram. We both agreed to have an honest relationship. That shouldn't be hard when two people are in love. But we got so much to build on. You know, a king is not complete without his queen. We can never build a kingdom together if you still crave attention from the streets. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Listen, that kingdom. was very deep the way that it ended yeah. off. Yeah. So, you know what? Um, yeah. Wow, I don't even know how, who I'm going to direct this question to first. Um, well, you know what? I'm going to direct it to Mecca because you were wow. in this scene. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, yes. Yeah, yeah, so tell was... me from your eyes, just being able to just play this role, the words that was shared, and tell us about the communication and what was going on with you and Nephi at this time that was, I mean, was very deep. Right. That's the only thing that I can say. It was yeah, very right. deep. So, so at this time right here in the movie, Nephi, you know, myself and Nephi, we were already involved. And um, even though Nephi knew what I was into, but, you know, love makes you change behaviors. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if you love something enough, you'll sacrifice and compromise. And compromise is not a bad word when we, when we talk about it. Sacrifice and compromise for love mm -hmm. or for what you believe in. And so um, Nephi, Nephi's aspirations is that our relationship and how we felt about each other mm -hmm would steer me away from something so negative that's so so easy to see. Like, this is danger for you right here. This is not going to benefit you in the future. This is harming. This is putting your life in danger. Yeah. And so she was a woman that was trying to steer me away, but I was still gravitating. How do they say it? Uh, you could take... Uh, you could take the fella out the hood, but you yeah. can't take, take the hood yeah. out of him. You know yeah. what I mean? And yeah. so even though we were remotely not necessarily in the hood, but our conversations were always about either yeah. me, I was there, or I, you, you know, gravitated back there and did some mischief and had to explain to her. Yeah. And see, she was just letting me know and putting her foot down at that point. Yes, definitely, that definitely. we can't exist if definitely. we're not on the same page. Right. Mm -hmm. We're yeah. trying to move forward yeah. in unity, mm -hmm. you know, um, with the same thought process, same plan as, um, you know, man and woman. Yeah. And if we're not on the same page, it's not going to work. And yeah. I think that yeah. that's what and happens. I, yeah, and I guess, you know, just <coughs> going from you as the actor and just now going to the director, yeah. you know, what was so important about this, you know, scene here that you want to be able to project out to the audience? What was important is, because at, at, at this point, you know, within the episode, she's at a point where we can see Nephi almost losing hope to what she thinks um, was possible. I, you know, I, I think everyone gets to a point where you're tired. Yeah. It doesn't matter, matter how much love you have for an individual, if they not, you know, stepping up to the plate as they should, as we expected, we somehow we begin to lose hope. So mm -hmm. you're talking about a guy who's constantly, like she says, when I think you're by my side, you're not, and I'm scared. You know, with everything that's happening out in the street and, 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 and so on, you know, they, 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 there's a lot. That's like, you know, as a song say, yeah. there's no love in the street for um, a king. So right. she's panicking at 
at this point, and she's tired, and she doesn't really know what to do. She's at frustration base. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's go to this next clip. So we have a <clears throat> clip. Think about the family. Let's take a look at that now. You're the type of Christian that give us a bad name. And you're the type of heathens that disgust me, thinking that you're better than everybody else. That's enough, you two. Mifi, you don't have to do what happened. Ou bien qui sont fou et quoi dans la rue. Mais songez, bon Dieu a regardé tout bagay. Don't just think about yourself. Think about this family. It's always about this family. What about what I want, Mom? <laughs> Haven't you done enough to me? You're right, Mom. God sees everything. Wow. Oh, God sees everything. Yo. I'm just going to direct this to Jill because Leko Leglis Lakai. So, I, you know, and, and I know that you were not in the scene, mm -hmm. but just looking at it, you know, and God sees everything and mm -hmm. so forth. Just tell me a little bit of just listening to this. What does that bring to you and that you want the audience to learn from here? Honestly, it's just when it comes to like a Haitian family, a Haitian family is a praying family. Mm -hmm. So whether or not Nephi is doing what she's doing and her mother disagrees with her, she's still going to go in her bedroom and pray for her. Yeah. So what I want people to take away from this is that prayer works. Like she says, yeah. God sees everything. Whether or not she's doing what her parents want her to, she's going to be protected because yeah. those are prayers from your ancestors. Those are par um, prayers from your grandparents. Mm -hmm. Those are prayers from your parents. Yeah. So yeah. I want people to take that away from that. Like religion yeah. is very important in our culture. Yeah. And yeah. I guess that's like one of the things, you know, um, that when people hear this and want to, you know, about the, you know, religious backgrounds, the different mm -hmm. cultures and mm -hmm. so forth. And especially when you're coming from different backgrounds, there's so many different religious practices that right. everyone play. But at the end of the day, like you're saying, just giving a shout out to our parents, right. because even though that they really didn't have the educational background, yeah. but that method, again, yeah. it, worked. it, it worked. worked and it kept them in, in addition to praying right. that yeah. God sees everything. Baton right. works. Yeah, yeah baton, baton, just baton for those work. that do not Since know what baton means, um, <laughs> since you are getting beaten. So that is since also another thing. That's definitely thing. a part That's of our culture. Yes. <laughs> and you know, and I know that we have to, you know, getting close and wrapping things up and just going back to, you know, the, the culture. Um, how has the Haitian culture has been passed through your family? That's a deep one. Um, I, I can tell, tell, tell you how it should, it should, it should have been. And like, <laughs> I have two kids and I think one of the biggest mistakes that I, that I've done is not passed down Creole into them, mm -hmm. you know, and and because now they're at an age, you know, 19 and and and, and 17, and, and they're like that. I want to know Creole. Mm -hmm. You know, they have a desire to learn it. I always used to think that if I start speaking Creole to my kids, they're going to be confused. I didn't know. Yeah. You, you see, you see what I mean. But I, it, it's just kids what, are so smart. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Kids are so I smart. just didn't know, like, because when you trying to get your kids to move on, it's a lot easier to speak English. Let's get it together and we, and, and, yeah. and we move. So that's one of the things I felt like, mm -hmm. culture-wise, I should have given them that. Yeah. Um, and every time I think about it, you know, it, it hurt me. But one thing for sure, I've always expressed to them how important it is. We teach them about uh, um, the, the, in, the independence that we had. You know, um, you know how we are a proud country. We have so much to feel proud, proud about, although, a lot, a lot, a lot of time they're trying to dim diminish who we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's why within this film you would hear there's a there's a sec a, a se section in the film that talks about the 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 fight and what it is to wear the Haitian flag. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of things that um, history yeah. that needs to be taught into 
our kids yeah. and coach. And I'm guilty yeah. myself. You know, I have three beautiful <laughs> kids, and um, they don't know a, a sniff of Creole. Yeah. And that's because of us moving here, yeah. migrating over here, trying to adapt to the new culture, yeah. the new mm -hmm. lives and struggles that we all face. Mm -hmm. and I, I give respect to, you know, you know the, the, uh, the Spanish community. They yes. don't play that. Oh, yeah. yeah. They don't play that. <laughs> Papi, children, you, yeah. you gonna learn that. <laughs> you gonna learn Spanish before you, you learn English. Yeah, yeah, for sure, yes. For sure. Yes. Uh, mommy, and yeah. I want to say, you know, and, and I want to just really give to, for every single one of yeah. you guys of, you know, about us moving our culture forward, yeah. right? Um, how can we, like, what is there that we can do to continue to uplift the Haitian culture? And I'll just start with you and we'll go down. Um, as a cultural ambassador, I feel like everything I put my foot into um, um, I'm trying to push the culture forward because I know how delicate it is. Yeah. I see the spotlight that's on Haiti all the time mm -hmm. yeah. is always in a negative light. Yes. And as a cultural ambassador, I'm not concentrating on just those things. I know the systematic dynamics of why that's happening. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. again, they're trying to diminish us as a people. Yes. First black independent empire in the world. Right. Yes. That's not something that anybody's, like, yeah. they're just trying like, to, yeah. you know, yeah. put you up. And so, um, I feel that, yeah, I feel like upholding our yeah, culture and being definitely. able to pass it down is something that we should do in our artistic expressions. Right. Yeah. And right. what about you, Jill, Jill, real quickly? Just to honestly piggyback off what he just said, um, just being Haitian American is enough for me to always just put my country forward. Like, yeah. never the negative talk. I'm not going to revert back to that positivity this right here is major yeah we're doing Thank it we're you. impacting the culture right. yeah. it's a positive message we're doing that we're expressing ourselves creatively and it's it's good for our yeah. culture yeah. and ending it off with the director with the films and everything that you're doing you know what are you going to continue to do to just uplift the culture so we can come to a close like Gio say it's right it's, it's right here we, mm -hmm. we we starting with you know as a film director we bringing Haitian, the culture, yeah. and the films that we are doing. Um, and that's the best way, you know, at, and, and, and I would like to encourage other yeah. producers and, 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 you know, directors that are Haitian to continue to bring Haitian into the spotlight so we can have, a, um, I mean, this is one side of the story, but so many different other stories mm -hmm. that we can bring yes, into film, yes, for you sure. know, so people yes. will have an understanding. Thank you. Thank you so very much yes. for um, being here. Thank you guys for being here. So you have been watching the new Haitian generation where my guests have been Lunar Eugene, Mecca Grimo, and Giovanni Andre, and myself, the producer for Lunarversal Production. So watch the new Haitian generation Tuesdays and Thursdays at 10 p.m. on Beacon TV. Tune in next time. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs>